What about the differences between running on a treadmill and outdoors? Is there an increased or decreased risk of injury? And how much help do you get from the treadmill's motor? And do you have to have the treadmill on a 1 or 2% incline to compensate for the lack of air resistance? And this video tells you all the answers about this and more, so just follow along. Let's start by recognizing that there are differences between running on a treadmill and running outdoors. And I'll go through them one by one in a moment. But on the whole, there really isn't that much of a difference. The differences that exist are very small. And when smart people have looked at this in studies, it seems that the degree of effort is about the same. The fact that there are individual runners who find it much harder or much easier to run on a treadmill than outside and are convinced that everyone experienced the same thing as they do, then it's not interesting. Most of it seems to be in their heads. Probably the most common thing I hear from runners is the belief that it is much easier to run on a treadmill. This is usually because they believe that the treadmill's motor does most of the work. Which is based on a misunderstanding of how running works. Running does not work like pushing a car forward. There is no active pushing. Instead, running is a lot more like bouncing. Even though you have a relatively long contact time, you have the foot long time in the ground. The foot is anyway in the ground for a very, very short amount of time. You don't have the time to actively push off with the muscles. Not like pushing the car. It happens automatically and running is more comparable to bouncing. It looks like this. You land, you put your weight on the foot and then you collapse a little bit before bouncing up again. But before you bounce up, the treadmill had time to move your foot backwards. Like this. You land, the body is compressed a little, and then the elastic parts are pulled out and give you this elastic recoil through the stretch shortening cycle. But before you bounce up again, the foot has moved to this place, which means that you are pushed diagonally upwards forwards from the bounce down Compression, foot moved, you bounce up forward. The effort is about the same outdoors as on a treadmill. And this is not my opinion, this has been studied many times. Now to the question whether you need to have the treadmill on an incline to make it as hard as it is outside, as many people say. Well, first of all, we have already said that the motor isn't doing the work, it's a bounce, so you don't need to compensate for that. I often hear that you have to compensate with a bit of an incline to compensate for the air resistance you get when you run outside. And that is of course true. There is an air resistance moving through air when you run outside compared to standing still on the treadmill. Well, at least if you are running fast. At the pace that most recreational runners run, air resistance makes virtually no difference. There are a few different figures on where it starts to make a difference, but in principle you probably have to run at the pace of at least 7 minutes per mile, that is 421 per kilometer, approximately. If you run slower than that, the air resistance is not a problem at all and is hardly even measurable. There can of course be headwind outside, which of course together with the air resistance make it much more difficult outside. But there can also be a tailwind. But, but if we now ignore the fact that it can, the wind can blow in different directions when you are running outside and that you, it can possibly affect how much energy that is used, you must run at at least 421 7 minutes per mile before the air resistance is noticeable. Of course, there are some things that can make running outdoors more difficult besides the wind. For example, hills, up, down, sharp curves, and the fact that the ground is, I don't know, tilted, it's leaning this way, that way. 
a bit all the time, which makes that you have to work probably harder with balance and your core muscles. And that is obviously something that occurs a lot more if you run in the forest or on the mountains or whatever. But right now we're mainly talking about the comparison between running straight forward on a flat ground outside and running on a flat treadmill. There can be a slightly higher risk of overload injuries when running on a treadmill as the movements are completely identical with every step you take. It can be very, very repetitive. Running outside is more dynamic when you have to look at where people are or trees or stones or logs or make turns in hills and everything. There are also slight differences in how you use your muscles depending on whether you run outside or on a treadmill. When running on a treadmill, studies have shown that there is slightly less activation of the hamstrings compared to running outside at the same pace. And this can be good to know if, for example, you are coming back from a hamstring injury. Then it's probably better if you choose the treadmill instead of running outside. If you want to reduce the load after an injury, you can of course also just run a little slower. This is by far the easiest way to reduce load when you run. But it can be good to know that the hamstrings are loaded a little bit less on the treadmill. But even if the hamstrings work a little less, you usually work more in the ankles, which means a higher load in especially the calves and Achilles tendon. And then the obvious advice is to preferably not choose the treadmill, but to run outdoors if you have had rupture in your calves or problem with your Achilles tendons. So today's take home message is no, it's not the motor in the treadmill that does most of the work when you run. Running is bouncing, not active muscle work like when you push a car. The load of the hamstrings is slightly lower on the treadmill than compared with running outside, but the load of the ankles, calves and Achilles tendons is probably a bit higher. No, you don't have to have the treadmill on 1 or 2 percent incline to compensate for air resistance unless you run at a pace of 7 minutes per mile. And that was a lot of facts that I managed to squeeze into this video. You're welcome. I really hope you liked that video and if you did, you please click the like button and maybe also the subscribe button so you don't miss any more videos here on my channel. And if you are interested in my online course, you find all the information about that one in the description below.